he uh, he had this habit of sitting the class down for it, it'd be random, but a good anything between an hour and three hours at the end of training on a Saturday and Sunday, and he would basically preach and tell us about all these things that were going to happen to us, all this fame and money that we were going to get through him. Uh, and I became pretty, well, it never seemed to materialize, so I became pretty conditioned to it, so that by the time when we left and turned up to that big, impressive show with the great set and the wicked production values and all of that, uh, I was kind of numb to it, to be honest. So I went along with everything they said. I acted impressed, you know, uh, and hopeful, but never really believed anything was going to it was going to pay off for us in the long term in terms of... And you're, I was absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I had it spot on, to be honest. But, um, yeah, and no, that was good while it lasted. And you know what? It did do stuff for the... You know, it, 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 it made our... For our, for all didn't it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that first show, of course, it was... I was supposed to wrestle Doug. Uh, we did a little gimmick where Doug wouldn't wrestle me. Uh, we ended up working with each other. Um, I remember, <laughs> if, if anyone, in fact, this is on YouTube, uh, you walk up to Mick McManus and you say, uh, I know I'm small, but I'm ready, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready for the challenge. Yeah, it was pretty cringeworthy stuff on my part, to be honest. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but we went on, we had this match, and literally shortly after, yeah. uh, I mean, we're talking what? I mean, you've been wrestling three years, you ended up going off to Michinoku Pro in Japan. Um, how was that? Wow, uh, that was quite a... Uh... Whew, it was a culture shock, first off. Uh, my first tour was a six-week one in the height of the summer. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, I just remember being pretty thrown off. It's a completely different world over there. Uh, it was really enjoyable. Um, it was really painful. I got, a, uh, I got some nerve damage in my back early in. Uh, just off of taking a bad fall and then had to work every day. Uh, their rings were a lot harder than the rings are these days. There was a lot less spring, so it was a lot less forgiving. Um, but no, man, I couldn't change it for the, for the world. And it? it was a great experience, and it obviously led on to other great things. So, yeah. That up. was the mask, the mask tournament. You were, what, you were Daka-chan? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, the mask tournament. Um, the mask was hideous. I felt like I couldn't... Like, there was a big barrier between me and the crowd, so that felt like a handicap. There was, um, like, netting wire mesh over the eyes and the mouth of the mask, and a lot of the shows were done way up in altitude, so the air was really thin, you'd struggle to breathe, and it was like doing a match with, a, with your hand, like, held over your mouth. Uh, plus, it was a more physical style than what I was used to over here, uh, not just in terms of getting hit, but also... It was pretty active at the time for me, man. It was a lot of jumping around, basically. Um, but no, no, awesome experience, and I'd recommend it for anyone. Uh, You'd have been, what, about 19 at the time? Yeah, I was young, man. I think I was 18, 19 on that first tour. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Did the Japanese guys look after you? Did they give you a hard time? What was it like? Yeah, they looked after me pretty well. I got a hard time from a couple of them, but I can't really complain. I mean, they had their young boys over there. And, yeah, that makes what I just said in terms of getting a hard time myself, that pretty much devalidates that because, man, these kids would have it rough. Uh, <laughs> they'd be beat up. They'd be ribbed. I remember one of them, a uh, great lad named Chine. That's a whole... This is going to sound so sick, but I get it. <laughs> it's just the culture is completely different over there. Tell me this, tell me this, and then I'll tell you a story of probably why I never got there. Go on, tell all right, me all right. this Well, this kid, he was a really nice guy. He used to carry all our bags and stuff like that. Really respectful, lovely kid. They got him naked in a headstand position, mate. Uh, <laughs> one of the wrestlers had a, a flip-flop. We all had to queue up and slap this kid in the nuts with <laughs> flip-flop. If he would have fell down from the headstand he was holding... He would have got his ass whipped. So, yeah, I, for them lads, it was not easy at all. Uh, me, I got taken care of really well. Uh, plenty of sponsors and stuff like that. Uh, take us out, spend money on us. Uh, no, nah, they, they were all great to me. But go on then. What's the story? That, <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that Crystal Palace show, as you know, at the time, I was not I was a bit of a cocky twat. And, uh, that, it was a gimmick, wasn't it? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, it was no gimmick. I was, oh, okay. I, was a, I was a cocky little, slightly muscular, tanned, cocky bastard. That was that was about what I was at the time. And I remember somebody after Danny Collins, Danny Boy Collins, yeah. had told me that uh, Grand Nanine were, and oh God, he's dead. God bless. You know, I'm just telling this story. It's no harm to him at all. Danny Collins had told me that Grand Nanine were. Uh, used to do sexual favours for Super Delphin. Okay, this is sounding pretty realistic, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and me obviously wanting to go to Japan did the worst thing imaginably possible because we was all sat in the canteen at Crystal Palace yeah. uh, and as the Jap guys, and obviously they didn't speak many much English, and there's me sticking my finger in my mouth, like making a blowjob sign oh, uh, to Grand Naninwa saying, you, Super Delphin, suck his cock, yes? Yeah? <laughs> Lovely. And I wonder why I never got that job. Or why. Ah, that's where you went wrong, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have probably sucked his cock if I'd have got out there, though. So oh, I, there I wouldn't have <laughs> yeah, it's wrestling, isn't it? <laughs> that's possibly why the, the Japanese tour never came off. And I also, I also, uh, and you'd have been there for this, I mean, a lot of people will not remember this at all, but uh, on that tour with you was Dirt Bike Kid, wasn't he? Was you there for when he got his face uh, or ribs caved in? Oh, what, well, over there? Yeah, yeah, I was watching, to be honest. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, you can still see that on YouTube now. People like it. People love to watch it. Uh, yeah, Sasuke just unloaded, didn't he? First he hit that spinning back kick. I think that's what broke his rib. And then he just, uh, yeah, he just starts laying into him. I'm not sure... I mean, that was on the first day of the tour, so uh, I mean, I don't know. They, they told me it was going to happen. You know, when when the Japs were over, yeah. I was saying to them uh, again in my youth of being an absolute twat, <laughs> um, why why are you taking this skinny, useless dirt bike kid guy over when there's other yeah. good guys here that you could take with you, obviously? Okay, cause and he, they he said, never had the best rep, did he? No, not at all. No, no. And they said it was going to be a lesson to him. Really. That's what they told you, yeah. They said it's going to be a lesson to him. So, obviously, that was the lesson. First day, he got caved in. And then the day that happened, I got a phone call asking if I could go out to replace him on that tour. All oh, right. Uh, which never... I never heard anything else, but obviously I, I was, like, completely masturbating over the whole situation, but it, it, nev it never happened. So uh, it's about the closest I ever got, apart from wrestling Miss Sour in a small hall in front of about 50 people in Scotland. But, it all counts. Yeah, that, it all counts. Yeah, it all counts, especially if, if, if you, like, really try and change the camera angle. You can tell people you went to Japan. You know, oh, yeah, that's, that's, see, that's what's more fun to have done after that. But I can't understand why they would pay... To get so, like pay, that was an expensive air ticket, and then all the hotel fees and whatnot, and his booking fee, obviously, just to just beat to him up in the first yeah. first day of the tour, you know. Bizarre, uh, yeah, really, really strange. But yeah, if anyone wants to see that on YouTube, uh, Dirt Bike Kid, great Sasuke, and what three minutes I would suspect. Yeah, yeah, about that. It's just a few pretty. kicks to the rib, straight into a grovet, and he's he's going home the next day. Pretty much, yeah. And I like I like the way Sasuke. During the thing, he's got his guard up. You know, he's laying in like, like penalty kick style kicks to a yeah. man who's on his back with a broken rib. But he's still got his guard up, like it's some kickboxing contest. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he, uh, I don't know. I, I'll did never, you, to be you, honest, I'll never fully understand it. Did and, you speak to the bike kid after it? Yeah, yeah, I did. He actually he stuck around. He was there for more than half of the tour. He just didn't work. Ah, um, okay. Yeah, see, that's the other thing. Like, I don't know if he thought maybe they'll get better. But, I mean, anyone who's ever had a broken rib knows that it takes a while to get better. So, uh, yeah, I wasn't fully sure why... I don't know, I wasn't sure about the whole thing, to be honest. And hearing... <laughs> that was, uh, that's news to me, that they had told you that they... That, you know, before taking him over, that they were taking him over as a lesson. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. that was what I was told. Because of uh, something he'd done with, with a, a title belt or something, that he'd made himself this... British Commonwealth champion and so, oh, right, and yeah. he, would, he wouldn't drop it because oh it's all such a long story but yeah he was on with Doc Dean and Doc Dean wouldn't put him over to to make the belt and all this kind of thing oh he's all he got, I mean but we're going back so far that people will be like what who however yeah, yeah, Steve, yeah, yeah. Steve shut up and get into the future will you please stop living <laughs> in the past so yeah we'll 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 move forward yeah we'll talk uh, about so, that again in the retirement home mate. That's what was. <laughs> once the outside was set in, we'll think we're going back tomorrow or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll talk about it again and again. And again. <laughs> but, yeah. It'll be interesting every time. <laughs> to us, yeah, it will. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. 
So you come back, you go from Japan, you get back to the UK. Uh, what kind of thing did you start from doing then? Did you um, obviously we did some more UWA things, and uh, was you wrestling for All Star? What, what was you doing? Was you pretty much uh, putting yourself about everywhere? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, like you say, it's a long time ago, so I wouldn't trust my memory a hundred percent and all of it, but. I would have got back from Japan. I would have been working for Brian Dixon, Scott Conway, Pinhead, Steve Barker. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian Dixon, everyone will know. Uh, Pinhead and Scott Conway, maybe just me and you. Um, yeah, and then I think shortly after that, there was a company called CCW, the Web Brothers, who you might or might not remember, Steve. No. Uh, they were uh, They were one of the first ones to come along about the time when FWA was starting up um, on uh -huh. loan in Portsmouth. Um, yeah, and I'll have worked for a few companies like that. Uh, looking back, I guess that the fact that I just got back from my first Japanese tour would have probably added a bit to my name value, if it existed at all. Um, an extra an extra £10, so you could have been getting 20 quid. So I was making life. serious progressions <laughs> in my career, mate. Serious <laughs> coin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was even getting uh, getting my travel paid. Wow, how's that? But, That's um, amazing. Ten p a mile. It's still ten p a mile in 2016. Oh God, this is progress. The world news. <laughs> this, is, this is literally progress. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> Uh, Actually, I, I can't say that because I don't know. So there you go. Uh, did, uh, uh, you went back to Japan. How long was it before your first tour when you went back to Japan again? I can't remember, to be honest. I was doing three tours a year, uh, one six weeks and two three-week tours. And I'm pretty sure that it would have been from, well, straight after that first one. So I might have been home maybe three months, that sort of time. And then I would have went out on another one of these three-week tours. And it just I think it kept on like that for the next few years. Um, and this was always for Mishinoku Pro, yeah? Yeah, apart from the one tour that I'd done at the end with Johnny uh, for Zero One, but that was years and years later. All of my stuff right. in Japan back then was for Mishinoku Pro. Right, okay. They were awesome, now, man. They were great to work for. They were really, and I remember years ago when the first guy that ever went, and he, he um, paid his own way there, so I remember... Uh, Finley giving them a bit of a kicking for it, but the first English guy I believe to ever work for them was a chap called Stevie J, and he was King's Cross. Really? Ah, oh, you know what? The name is really ah, oh, it's ringing a slight bell. But then Jimmy Ocean used to work for them as well. Jimmy Ocean went out as Battle Cat, and and yeah, they, I think that a lot of English Doc Dean went over, Danny Collins went over. Obviously, I they, think a lot they brought back Dynamite as well, didn't they? Oh my God, bless him! Yeah, that's that's uh, obviously Dynamite is is, is a, a wrestling god, but God, that is a uh, a sad sight to see that show where he's in that six man tag. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, after watching him in his prime. Uh, yeah, you watch that and you're like, what's going on? Is this what I've signed myself up for? You know, um, <laughs> I'm I'm going to ask you about that because I'm suffering like hell, so I dread to think you. But I'll I'll get to that a little bit later on. Right, right. Uh, so, yeah, uh, God. Are you are you are you knackered? Are your body physically knackered? You know what? To be honest, uh, I'm touching wood as I say this, but I'm not knackered at all. I'm completely. <sighs> it's as if I've never had an injury in my life. Uh, Crazy shit you do. <laughs> I, I train a lot. Um, I do circuit training that's pretty much based on the matches that I do. I don't do it actively in order to to stay healthy for wrestling, but the I don't know, they're functional circuits. I um yeah, I feel good at in that respect. I can't I think you're the only guy I know that when they wrestled was probably too skinny to get like to America and things and then when he stopped wrestling as much got massive. Right, uh <laughs> I, know, I guess it's just the way it the way things go, man. <laughs> um uh what was it? Right, so two thousand and two was my first time over there. Yeah, and I was skinny as a rake. Um I guess I'll have got a it's hard to tell when I put on when I grew up, basically, because obviously this this is my teenage years now. I was going to be uh -huh. silly at the time, but I guess by the time I made my quote unquote comeback um, for Alex, for Alex Shane at the in Coventry at the Sky Dome for FWK. I remember it well. Yeah. Yeah, I think then I'd have been a chunk bigger than I was near the start, but it wasn't really due to anything 
it wasn't like I said, right, by then I'll be that size or anything like that. I'd yeah, yeah, just, just, just growing up. You was a kid, yeah, yeah literally. That's right. it. I mean, we, we all were, we all were really. I'd, I mean, I'd have been 22. We was all, you know, pretty young for yeah, what we yeah. were, you know, for not ready at all for what we were doing no, at all, really, totally when you think not. about it. Yeah. Now, I remember being at Blackpool. Do you remember that?